Live from Harris Chester Casino and Resort, about a mile south of Philadelphia, it's Super Stakes Sunday, featuring the Hamiltonian winner and the sensation of the year, the undefeated three-year-old filly, see you at Peelers. Nothing gone. Explosive matter hits the Colonial easily. Underway. It's harness racing at its very best from Harrah's in Chester, just south of Philadelphia. And as with any live sporting event, weather could very well be a factor today as we're under lightning bombardment here in southeast Pennsylvania, where the weather pattern has been more like southeast Florida for the last week or so, and lightning very much in the area and could affect our race. And what racing we have ahead for you today. Hello, everyone. I'm Lou Tilly, bringing you this Super Stake Sunday and three featured events coming your way, including the Colonial, the first race that we'll be seeing today with $500,000, the Battle of the Brandywine as well, another $500,000, and then the sensational CU at Peelers will be featured and the favorite in the $350,000, the Valley Forge. Joining me today, Steve Ross, the weekly host of PA Harness Week here in the Philadelphia area. And what a great day of racing, Steve. It doesn't get any better than this, Lou. Normally, Super Stake Sunday is a terrific day, and today is no exception, except it is even better than usual. Why? Because the Hamiltonian winner, the biggest trotting event in the sport, the signature event of harness racing, the winner of the Hamiltonian, Broad Bond, is coming here to Harris Chester to try to complete the double, the Hamiltonian and the Colonial. Let's it's been a long a time since that's happened. Let's take a look at some of the entries uh, here gathered for the Colonial with $500,000 at stake. And there is Broad Bond, a big, strong horse. And lots of money in the bank, too. Made lots of people happy. Went off at 6-1 to one in the Hamiltonian. Surprised everybody. Went right on the lead and every, said to everybody, come get me. And nobody could. Mm -hmm. See and you with Peelers now. 21 for 21. And trying to race into the record books, maybe even for, in for immortality. The last goes for race number 22 in an undefeated career today. And, of course, you know, CU at Peelers, Lou, is Canadian for strip club. I don't know if you're aware of that or not. I, I've, I've heard that somewhere. Yeah, and that's <laughs> the fact is, will she remain undefeated or will she be stripped of her undefeated status. Going for 22 in a row here today. Um, another star joining us today uh, on the track and a sensational day of fun for all the folks gathered here at Harris Chester. Jonathan Groff, the star of the hit show Glee. Does that star spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the And Jonathan is a huge star and on his way to Broadway now, but not before he had a chance to talk with one of the members of our team, uh, Charlotte McBride. Thanks, Lou. I'm here with a very special guest, Jonathan Groff. You probably know him from the hit show Glee. Jonathan, why did you decide to come out here today and be our special guest of honor? Well, the truth is my dad, Jim Groff, uh, trains and races horses for a living, has raced at this track before. I've seen him race at this track before. And... Uh, his friends asked me to come and do it, so I was really happy to do that. Now, many people that have fathers in this sport get involved in the sport as well. You obviously went a totally different route. Why didn't you go with harness racing? Well, I think the thing that I learned most from my dad is that uh, growing up, his parents were dairy farmers, and that's also another sort of family tradition where the kids usually take over. And But he followed his passion, which was horses instead. And so when I was growing up, my parents, both my mom and my dad, really encouraged me to find my own passion, whether that was horses or sports or ended up being acting. And so I think I ended up be going into acting because it was truly my passion in the way that horses are and were my dad's passion. 
And we've seen you succeed in Glee, doing what you love, singing and acting. But now you're venturing out to other things. Talk about your, your next ventures. Well, I started, before I did Glee, I did a lot of theater. I moved to New York right after high school and did a couple of Broadway shows. And uh, right now I'm in rehearsals for a new off-Broadway play called The Submission, uh, which is at a theater called the Lucille Lortel in the West Village. We start performances the first week of September. Are you nervous? Are you excited to get into this off-Broadway slash Broadway route? I am. I am nervous. I was just learning my lines in the car here, trying to get ready, trying to get ready to do it. I'm excited. I love the theater, so I love going back to it. I know you're excited about theater, but are you excited to be here for Super Steak Sunday? Yes, I'm so excited. It's such a big day, you know, for the races, and I'm here with my dad and my mom and my brother and his wife, and I'm excited to bet on some horses and have a good day. We are excited to have you. You rock the national anthem, and thank you. thank you so much for being here, Lou. We're going to send it back to you. He is a big, big star, and that is our Charlotte McBride, who was a big, big star, by the way, a gymnast at the University of Georgia, now part of the PA Harness Racing Week team. Back with uh, Steve Ross as we look forward to the Colonial. 500 big ones up for grab here today, Steve. Okay, here it is. Man of many missions, number one horse. He was the horse that was the favorite in the Hamiltonian, made a late, untimely break. He's at seven to two and has the rail and has a big shot. He has beaten Broadbond already. As has number two, DeJarmo at five to two with Brian Sears. And he has a shot too. And Pastor Steven, last year's two-year-old champion, all have a chance against Broadbond today. Now Broadbond, there he is. George Brennan, the Hamiltonian winner, has over a million dollars in the bank. Oddly wow. enough, he's going off at nine to two, according to the morning line. And the other horses, the three outside horses, I don't give much of a shot to. I think most of the play is on the inside, and those are the horses who will determine who will walk away with the winner's share of 250,000 bucks. Well, let's find out more about Broadbond, the big horse with a long stride, and talk with his trainer. Let's go down to Heather Moffitt, who joins us from the paddock. Thanks, guys. Trainer Noel Daly joins me now. He's the trainer of Broadbond. This horse had an injury late in the season, a fractured coffin bone, and then he wins the Hamiltonian this year. How do you bring a horse back like that? I mean, other than very carefully. <laughs> we uh, really had no problems with him. We were very lucky. You know, we discovered it after he won his elimination of the Breeders' Ground, so we put him away. He was on store rest for three months. Started swimming and got back on time and uh, been lucky. He really had no issues to date with him at all with that particular leg, so very happy with him. In the Hamiltonian, you did get a breather. Now, today, it's a different track. A couple different horses in there. How confident are you? Yeah, you know, he got a breather because, you know, if, if, if that had attacked him, he'd have beaten him by more, I think. You know, man of many missions, he ran, he was tired when he ran. If he had attacked him, it would have been, you know, would have been worse. I, I, my horse will go quicker. You know, if we can go two minutes, we're going to win going two minutes. I think he's a lot more up his sleeve. Um, yeah, we'll find out. Today, it's definitely be a little tougher. He's going to have to cross them. There's a bit of speed. You know, all the good ones appear to be drawn inside him, so it'll be a good race. The big question is, some people call him Broad Bond. Some people call him Broad Band, like his driver, George Brennan. What is it? Uh, well, I say Barn. Uh, you know, George is, I'm not sure where George is from, but uh, the, the owner calls him Barn, so I'll go with Barn. Yeah. Right. Sounds good. Thanks, Noel. Okay, thanks. Bye. Guys, back to you. Yeah, we couldn't figure out if it was Bond like an Autobahn, the high-speed raceway mm -hmm. in Germany, or Broadband, like the popular thing for all the tech heads out there. I don't think it matters, Lou. It just means he's a rich horse, and his owners have a lot of money in the bank, whatever you want to call him. And trying to add to it today. When we come back, we'll set the field for you live. It's a super stakes day of horse racing from Chester. The horses are getting ready, ready to go when we come right back. Stay with us live. It's Super Stakes Sunday. Hey, it is a sensational facility, Harris Racetrack and Casino. Yeah, the high rollers are coming down to Chester just outside of Philadelphia. Inside, it is simply spectacular. What a night or afternoon of fun for, or seriously, for, for the whole family down here. And right now, a special promotion underway thanks to Jeff D'Ambrosio Chevrolet. They're giving away this beautiful Corvette. The drawing is coming up on September 4th, and you can enter right now using your special Fast Bet Harris or racing cards to get extra entries. That's coming up on September 4th. Am I eligible for Get that? in there right now. Oh, okay. i got to fill out my entry form. Because there's a nice crowd on hand here for the yeah, Super absolutely. Stake Sunday. Uh, and coming up on deck is the big one, the Colonial, and Charla right now to talk about this Super Stake Sunday right here at Chester Harris. Charla? 
Hey guys, I'm here with Ron Bauman, the general manager of Harris Chester Casino and Racetrack. A great day here so far. We've had some rain, but you know what? The fans are still out having a good time. What can we expect for today? We can expect some of the best drivers and the best horses in, in the world to compete today. Uh, hopefully Mother Nature will keep uh, keep at bay a little bit, and the thousands and thousands of fans here will enjoy some phenomenal races today. Having the Hamiltonian winner here, the Meadowlands Pace winner here, what does that bring to this track in terms of experience and talent? But it's brought us a whole new world class of drivers and horses that we that we've seen for the first time and I think to validate that we're enjoying record numbers of attendants that are here live today to see those horses so thousands and thousands of individuals have come out just because of those two horses now we obviously wish that it wasn't raining but they say that it's good luck when it rains on your wedding day so I say it's good luck for Super State Sunday what about you I say it's good luck and no matter what the weather is we'll be giving away almost two and a half million dollars in purses today the single large day of purse in, in the state of Pennsylvania so I think I think everybody will enjoy that rain hail sleet or snow or maybe with a little sunshine two and a half million dollars feels pretty good it does all right with that we're gonna send it back to you guys thank you Sharla our, our uh, harness angels of Sharla Heather and Susan Ellers uh, we're a dying breed my friend but not these standard breads as they get ready to go to the post for the colonial Steve Okay, big race, 500000 bucks in the line. The winner gets $250,000. And the horses to be concerned with, of course, the obvious one is Broad Bond, number five. But we're looking at number one now, and that is Man of Many Missions. And he gets a driver change, David Miller, one of the top drivers in the world. There's number two, DiGiarmo, with Brian Sears at five to two. Okay, DiGiarmo won the Earl Beale Memorial, and he did it in high-flying fashion as he beat Pastor Stephen and uh, the Hamiltonian winner. Here it goes. In the stretch at Mohegan Sun and Pocono Downs. He just left them all for dead. He took off. Boom. And he went like crazy. DiGiarmo, a force to be reckoned with today in the Colonial. With Brian Sears driving. And here we are in Chester today. Uh, some concerns about a sloppy track, Steve. We had some rain earlier on, but it looks like most of the weather, and it looks like good racing and good footing underneath. Yeah, the, it, it, the footing is okay. It looks okay. They're on top of it. They're, they're manicuring the track. It's, I don't think it's going to be a factor. Okay, DiGiormo, number two. There he goes. Man of many missions, as you mentioned again, a real contender here at the Colonial with 500,000 at stake here on this great race that goes way back to your days at Liberty Bell Park in Northeast Philadelphia in 1968. You make me sound so old. <laughs> I wasn't back at Liberty Bell in 68. I'm not, not, not in 68, but 78. I got you. Okay, but man of many missions was the 8-5 to five chalk in the Hamiltonian. And he was the horse the kid took a run at him. Here it goes. On the outside, there is man of many missions. On the front end is Broad Bond. Can he get him? He looks like he's got a shot in mid stretch here. Let's see what happens. All of a sudden, boom, he jumps, makes a break, goes off stride, mm. and, and Broad Bond puts some space between them. And then the horse on the inside, it was a long shot to begin with, had no shot of getting there. Broad Bond wins it easy, and the Hamiltonian was his. Broad Bond, an impressive uh, animal. Seriously, a very big horse with a beautiful long stride. He is, and there's no guarantees, by the way, Lou, that he is going to win today because there's a lot of good horses with him and horses that have beaten him before. So this is not going to be a And a, a shorter track as well, which is a factor. Yeah, the turns are tighter. Uh, I think Broad Bond will go to the front, uh, but he's going to have some activity. There he is. The, as you said, Lou, he's a big, strapping horse. He's, he's good-gated. He's not likely to make a break or anything else. And he's got the good f turn of speed. So he'll come out of the gate flying. He should have the lead. Tell me something about his driver. At 6-5, to five, they're going off with a heavy favorite right now. His driver is George Brennan. His nickname, he's the Minister of Speed. He likes to go to the front. He's comfortable up front. He gives the horse a breather. He's going to be very tough to beat. If he goes out and he gives him a, sec a breather on the second quarter, forget it. He's gone. You know, you made an interesting point. There's $500,000 at stake here. Half of that goes to the winner. Then it's divvied up amongst the rest of the field. Right. So these drives are very aware of that and fighting for a piece of the pie, if not the top slot. Exactly. Exactly. A lot of times if you come first over, you're giving up a chance to get a check, which could be a problem too. Let's go down to the winner's circle now. And as I said, part of our harness angels. Here's Heather and Susan with their picks of the Colonial just a few minutes away. Girls? 
Well, I've been called a lot of things, but I haven't been called an angel lately, so thank you, Lou. All right, Susan Ellers is here with us. She is our handicapper, and she knows her stuff. Susan, who do you like in the Colonial? Well, I do like the two Deja Bro. This Colt's been super all year. He did take a lifetime mark on a 5 8 mile track. Now, trainer Tron Smith's hammer's not in the bike, as usual, but when him and driver Brian Sears team up, it's like Scorsese and De Niro. Oh, okay then. That sounds like a box office hit, right? Oh, if anyone wonders who I like, I don't like like this horse. I love him. Number seven, this horse, whatever it takes. The team of Julie Miller and Andy Miller, they're like the Lucy and Ricky of harness racing, if you will. This horse comes home like a pacer. He's going to be third over. He's going to come three wide and wing in around that last turn, and he's going to get all the money. Back to you guys. I kind of like the, the Tactor family here with the possibility of a big day. The ownership of CU with Peelers still to come in the Valley Fords. The undefeated three-year-old Philly has a horse in this field as well, Pastor Stephen, named after their Presbyterian pastor back at their home church. Nice Great touch. Great story involved with that, yeah. As a matter of fact, uh, Pastor Stephen is racing for Africa. 5% of his total earnings this year are being donated to Malawi, Africa for the 2011 racing season. The, the, um, the website is Villages in Partnership org. Okay, and look who we have there. There is John Campbell, and boy, it is so good to see Johnny C, the man who has won more money in this game than anybody else. He was in a bad accident here at Harris Chester back in May. Put him on the shelf for several months. Take a look at this. This is a frightening situation, and lets you know what happens every time these guys sit behind a horse. Look at that. Wow. Oh, let's have another look at this. Look at this. gets no. uh, thrown forward and then down directly on the shoulder. That is just a scary thing. Two-year-old trotting fillies was the race. And there he is. There's John Campbell. He's back. We had a chance to talk with him just before today's Colonial. Well, I'm feeling very good. Everything healed up well. Uh, I'm pain-free. Um, very fortunate that I didn't have to have surgery, and that certainly made, made it easier to heal and uh, get back uh, I likely wouldn't have been back quite as quick if it hadn't been for the Hamiltonian, but uh, I got a chance to race in it, and that's always special. Um, opening night race, very good in the Hamiltonian. Uh, he's got a decent post here today. I think he's a horse that uh, certainly can contend with these horses. He, he needs a trip uh, to work out his ways. Uh, we need some arguing and fast fractions on the front, and that, that would be his, to his benefit. Now, he's in the field today. We're getting ready to go with the Colonial. Let's toss it now to the track announcer here at Chester, James Withright. Hamiltonian winner, Rod Bond, 8-5 to five favorite, Man of Many Missions, and Dejarnbro both 2-1. to one. They're ready for a start. Off of the Colonial, Broad Bond fast off the mark. Dejarnbro flashes speed up the inside. Opening night will line up in third as Broad Bond, the Hamiltonian winner, clears Dejarnbro by two and a half lengths, moving into the first turn. Two and a half more to opening night in third by two. Man of many missions is fourth. Pastor Steven is fifth. Big rigs and whatever it takes are next. The back marker is leader of the gang, and he is 15 lengths behind Broad Bond. Broad Bond, a length and three quarters leader from Dejan Bro, and they've pulled clear by three and a half from opening night after a 27 and one first quarter. Passed us on the first occasion. Broad Bond maintains a comfortable length and three quarters advantage on Dejan Bro in the loose pocket. Opening night's drawn a much closer third, now three and a half from the front. Man of Many Missions closes up the gap at fourth, and now David Miller guides him to the outside. Man of Many Missions with five and a half to make up. Pastor Steven will track his cover at race's midpoint. Big Riggs, a length away the inside. He's eight and a half from the front. Whatever it takes, floated third over, and three off last. Now off stride is leader of the gang. The half mile, 55 and two, and Broad Bond leads to Jarmbro by a length and a half, with three eights to go in the 41st Colonial. Broad Bond holding clear. Now he's two in front. Man of many missions took second wide of DeJarnbro. Opening night is fourth and still three and a half from the front. Pastor Steven laboring to his outside. Then comes Big Riggs followed wide by whatever it takes and a long last is leader of the gang. Three quarters in 124 flat and Broad Bond is put to the test by Man of many missions. Their heads apart coming to head stretch and DeJarnbro is fanned three wide as they cut the corner. Man of many missions takes over. Chased home by DeJarnbro. Broad Bond is defeated at the 70, Man of Many Missions holding sway. Man of Many Missions takes Colonial 41 by three quarters of a length.
to Jambro second, then Pastor Steven, followed by a fading Broad Vaughn opening night. Big rigs, whatever it takes, and leader of the gang last of all, 153 flat the winning time. Man of many missions. Wow, and back now live, we lost James Withright for a second, but the drama was obvious. Now with Steve Ross, what a great race to replay. Talk about tactical races by three key horses that each had a shot there in that final quarter mile. Okay, let's have a look at this one again. You'll see this in the turn. That's Broad Bond with the lead on the outside, Man of Many Missions. Had to come a long way. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But now he's heading here for the lead, and that when they'll, at the top of the stretch, they'll turn home. And you could see Man of Many Missions, who was the favorite in the Hamiltonian. And Broadbond took the measure of him at 6-1. to one. He now goes by, and he gets clear. David wow. Miller in the bike, first time for Andy Miller. He goes by, and he beats the Hamiltonian winner, who can only match fourth. Yeah, I think he only managed to finish fourth. How do you account for that? Was the difference in the track size? We're running at five eighths here versus a mile at Meadowlands. Well, it, according to what happened was one of the big questions was man of many missions. Which one of uh, him was going to show up? Ah. The one who was rough gated and is prone to breaking or the one who stays flat and is just a flat up trotting monster. We saw what happened today. He came up. He didn't have any help. He came first over all by himself. He did it alone. He looked first over the swinging eye. wide, yes. taking the long track. Yeah, he took the long, the long road for more ground. He looked the Hamiltonian winner in the eye and he went bye-bye and that was that. Wow. So man of many missions pulling an upset of some sort. Knocking off the Hamiltonian winner here at the $500,000 Colonial. We'll be back to recap it, show you the numbers and talk with the winners right after this. So it's official now. The $500,000 Colonial goes to Man of Many Missions in front of DeJambro and Pastor Stevens. And let's go down to the winner circle now with the winner and Heather. Thanks, guys. I'm here with a whole entourage for Man of Many Missions. First of all, we'll start off with Irv Miller. This horse has been known to, I don't know, misbehave on the racetrack a little bit. How did you get that under control today? No, I don't know. We've, I think we've had it under control since we fixed his foot um, about three or four weeks ago. But up to that point, we were fighting with the shoe and change and this and that, trying to get it right. And, and he's just he's such an honest horse. He really tries his heart out. And um, Dave did a great job just being patient with him today and got him around there. Your brother Andy has been the only one to drive this horse until today. Of course, Andy had to take his wife's horse, which was whatever it takes. Did you give Dave Miller any instructions? Yeah, I, I mean, I called him the other day to make sure he'd drive the horse for us, and then uh, Dave listens well. I told him just to be a little patient, so that's all he was. All right, thanks, sir. I like a man who listens well, let me tell you. All right, I know you're working hard out there because you're awfully dirty. Tell me about your trip. Well, you know, I, uh, I just knowing the horse, uh, what Herb told me and watching him race, you know, he just had to be kind of careful and uh, let him kind of find himself and uh, go from there. And, uh, you know, he got out of the gate good. He felt good. And then when I asked him to move, you know, I just kind of took my time. And uh, he just kind of kept inching up, inching up. And then uh, he finally went by him and held him off. Yeah, he was awesome. Uh, the whole mile and around, around that final turn, he was something else. I thought you were really going to bury him. And you must have felt good, too. Well, yeah, through the stretch, uh, he felt good. Like, he had trot. Um, he's a little, uh, like, watching Andy drive him there. He's a little uh, funny about his gait. And I didn't know how hard to push him. And... Uh, but he kept digging and, uh, you know, he held on and we got the job done. Thanks, Dave. Right. Jerry Silva, you have owned and own a lot of great horses. Um, this horse is coming off an, off an awesome performance. Were you expecting this today? I was praying for it. I didn't know we would, we would get it. You know, I thought that uh, David suits him very, very well. And uh, it's really up to the driver. I mean, we were at the Meadowlands last night and uh, we didn't do well at all. And Teresa and I came down here hoping to do better, and we did with uh, Man and Many Missions and Mystic Desire. Well, congratulations. Thanks, Jerry. Thank you very much. See you around. Back to you guys. Wow, Heather got them all, didn't he? Here's the official now. The Colonial going to Man of Many Missions at 640, 320, and 280. DeJambro at $3 and $3. And Pastor Stevens sneaks into the money. Uh, win, place, and show. And a credit to the betters here, the savvy harness racing fans here at a Super Stakes Sunday at Chester's Racetrack and Casino, uh, pretty much betting evenly between mm -hmm. the top four favorites here today, Steve. Indeed. You know, one other thing I want to mention, Lou, is that you could say, wh what happened with Broad Bond? He, he up ended the favorite man of many missions in the Hamiltonian, but came back today and got up ended the other way. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, these are not machines. These are animals. 
and they have blood running through their veins like anybody else. And the past performances will not show if a horse woke up and inadvertently had the wrong kind of runs that day. That's true. And a clever drive by uh, David Miller to bring home man of many missions. So a bit of an upset in the books. Will there be an upset of CU Wood Peelers? 21 for 21 in her remarkable career. She tries to make it a perfect 22 when we come back from Chester. Could Harris Superstake Sunday be part of developing harness racing histories? You're looking at the longest win streaks in the history of the standard breads, the harness racing game. And at the bottom, and in action here today, CU at Peelers, a perfect 21 for 21, going for 22, Steve. As they say, Lou, she is sweet. <laughs> Look at that face. She's a pacing machine, and you can see the great stride she has. Anybody comes at her, she sort of laughs at them. She's fought them off 21 straight times, trying to go for 22. With the win, could go on to take the Colts at the Little Brown Jug, and then go on to the Breeders, as you would mm -hmm. expect. And coming up right now, the Valley Forge Stakes for three-year-old fillies. Here are the final odds, the betting odds, as the crowd here at Chester sees them, Steve. What do you think? Who do you think is going to be the favorite in this particular event? <laughs> I would take a wild guess and say maybe see you with Peelers, the two horse. Uh, Crispy Apple, who was a fine filly in her own right. A couple horses in there that gave Peeler a little bit run for it the last time out. Yeah, it was in the Tarport half. It was kind of a situation where they say it's good to be good, but it's better to be good and lucky. Okay? And there was a little luck involved. Yeah, absolutely. In the Tarport half, Crispy Apple came three deep on the turn at the Meadowlands and was going by Seawood Peelers, but then blew the turn and essentially knocked herself right out of the race. Idelic, who was number three, sat on the inside and went to come to the outside and had a shot to run her down, and, oh, and she couldn't do that either. She made a break. There is the horses in this particular race. I don't think anything from the outside has a snowball's chance in this in, race. In, oh. it's, all, it's all on the inside. Let's and go to James Withright for the Valley Forge. Once yep. new Pussycats put into play, so too see you at Peelers from between Phillies. And Crispy Apple has achieved the lead. It is Crispy Apple, a length and three quarters in front of see you at Peelers. Once new Pussycat is parked from third. Ideal, Idyllic is close to the pace today. Now taking over the third spot, two and a half off the lead. And Johansson is up to take the lead with see you at Peelers. Wide of Crispy Apple coming off the first turn. Idyllic tracks in third, dropped the ball, closed off a seat in fourth. She's four and a half lengths off the pace. What's new? Pussy Cat was eased back six from the front. Followed by Hockey Talk Woman, Fresh Idea. Foxy Lady is last, a dozen behind the champion. See you in Peelers to the quarter in 26 and four. And she's a length of three quarters in front of Crispy Apple, headed for the bridge turn. Idyllic will be the one to take her shot at See you in Peelers approaching race's midpoint. Drop the ball, is second over and three lengths off the lead. What's new? Pussy Cat saving ground four from the front. Hockey Tonk Woman slides off the cones a length and a half farther back. And then it's three more to Fresh Idea and two off last Foxy Lady, 54 and four and the half. And see what Peelers faces. Heavy pressure up the backstretch in the Fifth Valley Forge from Idyllic, who's within a length on the outside, but she's laboring. Crispy Apple tracks intently from the pocket. Drop the ball, is second over, now three off the lead. See what Peelers shakes away from Idyllic with a quarter to go. And see what Peelers is now too clear. Crispy Apple has taken second back from a fading Idyllic. Drop the ball, circles wide on the turn with four lengths to make up. Three quarters in one, 22 and two. And see what Peelers is three in front on head stretch. See you at Peelers, holding clear from Crispy Apple. Idyllic is third, then drop the ball. See you at Peelers, she's the real deal today. 22 in a row. See you at Peelers, one by four. Crispy Apple second best, but Idyllic dropped the ball. What's new, Pussycat, Hockey Talk Woman, Foxy Lady, and Fresh Idea Lasted. One, 50 and two, see you at Peelers. Wow. You know, it's 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 not unlike a great, uh, you know, human runner. Mm -hmm. You were saying that the stride was so relaxed, so beautiful, just such a natural. She is gorgeous. It's a, it's a perfect thing to watch. There's the prices right there. See you at Peelers. A four to five favorite, which was not really long, was not really that short of odds. Pays 360, 242, 10. Crispy Apple, the one horse, 360, 260. Idelic was third, 280. To show. See you at Peelers. As you mentioned, the name comes from Canada, and the, uh, we used to call it the ballet up there. <laughs> and what the hell? She, she races naked, but she can get away with it. She runs fast. Heather with the winner. 
Thanks, guys. Jimmy Tactor, the trainer and part owner of See You at Peelers with me right now. Jimmy, you've had your share of world champions. You know what makes an outstanding horse. So really, how special is she? Well, she's quite unique. I mean, you know, it, do what you're doing every week. I mean, you know, it's it's so hard to do it. You know, I mean, in today's market, you know, it's very tough and very comparable. And I mean, you know, you re, you just watching 22 races. You know how many times uh, bad things happen. You know, I mean, but she's just unique. I mean, uh, she's one of a kind. Absolutely. And you know what I'm going to ask you, right? There's a big race coming up on September 22nd, the Little Brown Jug. What's going on with that? Well, you know, you got to play by ear a little bit. When you're coming into that uh, September, mid-September, you got to make your decision. And I'm not going to make it before uh, the last minute because all depends uh, how good she is. I mean, you know, it's, uh, it's still some time down the road, you know, so it's a lot of things can happen. And uh, and hopefully she's uh, in good shape. And, uh, you know, nobody would happy me to go out and uh, try to kick the boy's ass again. All right, we may see some girl power this September. Back to you guys. Wow, 22 for 22 and maybe on our way to horse racing immortality. When we come back, another 500 grand up for grabs. It's the historic Battle of the Brandywine on a Super Stakes Sunday. And welcome back to Harris Casino and Racetrack in Chester, Pennsylvania, just a mile south of Philadelphia and a great area for sports. Welcome to the Super Stakes Sunday of Harness Racing, one of the biggest days of the year with $2.5 million being offered and 500000 of it coming up right now in the Battle of the Brandywine. I'm Lou Tilly along with Steve Ross. Steve, who do you like? Who do you like? What a great question. Well, we have number one, Roll with Joe. And although it sounds like something you might order in a diner that you're familiar with, I'll take a roll with my coffee or <laughs> a roll good. with Joe. It's a million dollars he's gotten, it, gotten in the bank, and he's won the prestigious Meadowlands pace. So he's going to be very tough at 7 Hope to he didn't invest it in stocks this week. <laughs> really. Ron Pierce, the drive. Okay. Alsace Hanover, got to be a favorite as well. Alsace Hanover, Canadian driver Scott Zeran drives him. Ron Pierce drove him in the Adios, but Pierce elected to go with one roll with Joe. So if that tells you something, as a handicap, I'm sure it does. Uh, wink it, wink it, winking at you with Yannick Jingras, part of a three headed entry by George Teague, who seems to have three horses in every race that is contested in life. And here's a look now live as they get ready to go to the post in the Battle of the Brandywine. It goes back to the great old track in Wilmington, Delaware, Battle of the Brandywine. Our friend Marv Bockroth, a longtime publicist there. Mm -hmm. This was one of the great races where you took the two-year-old rivalries and they met again here in the Battle of the Brandywine again as three-year-olds. Exactly right, Lou. They're having a look at Roll with Joe. Meadowlands pace winner, and you'll see him here in the stretch. Roll with Joe. Fighting and staying on. Fighting the hang on, here he comes. Can he live? Roll with Joe, deep stretch. And he's gonna win the Meadowlands pace and it's million dollar purse. Doesn't get much better than that. So he's gonna be very tough today from the rail. There's Ron Pierce and all this celebrating going on in the Meadowlands winter circle. By the way, the Meadowlands closed last night. It was closing night at the Big M. And today the focus of harness racing is right here on Harris Chester. Okay, there lets it look at roll with Joe, Ron Pierce in the bike and number five that is Alsace Hanover he was absolutely huge Lou in the adios he went by powerful mist like he was standing still powerful mist incidentally is in this field and, and let's have a look at that here we go five hundred and forty four thousand dollars in earnings including the adios all right there he goes and he just left him goodbye Alsace Hanover, Ron Pierce in the bike. Ron has switched his allegiance today. He is going with Roll with Joe. But he won that Adios as easy can be in 148 and 3. Hello. And the five horse Alsace Hanover in our field here today at Harris getting ready to go in the Battle of the Brandywine. And we'll be back with that at $500,000 on, on at stake as we can continue with Super Stake Sunday.
Well, one of the Harris great chains of casinos and entertainment complexes all across the United States. Six of them right here in the Philadelphia area. This is Harris Chester, just a mile south of the Philadelphia city limits and near the Philadelphia International Airport. And we, of course, are right in their flight path. But at least today we have dodged the weather pattern a little bit. And now the sun is almost poking out as we get ready for our featured race of the day, the Battle of the Brandywine. I got to give you kudos because you're the guy that said you had a vibe it was going to be okay. We would overcome the bad weather. And... Thank goodness hey, we have. Maybe I'll become a weatherman. It's the one gig I haven't tried yet in yeah. uh, broadcasting. <laughs> it's time. Let's take a look at the uh, contenders for the 500 grand of the Brandywine, Steve. What do you think? Okay, number one, roll with Joe at two to one. Powerful myth. I, I don't know. C Custer the Dragon is a definite contender. He's won a couple of half a million dollar races already with Montreal Teague. Big Bad John is favored almost all the time. 13 times he's been in the winner's circle out of 17 races. And Alsace Hanover at six to five, surprisingly, is the chalk. Let's go down to Heather. Three generations of horse uh, racing in her blood from down in Delaware, along with Susan and their picks on the big race. Hi, girls. Hey, guys. All right, Susan, who do you like in the big race? Oh, Heather, this one was a tough one for me. There's a lot of contenders. I love Alsace Hanover, but Rock and Ronnie Pierce did pick off to drive the one. I got a good feeling about Custer the Dragon, and Big Bad John was super his last start. Dave Miller's red hot today. I think I'm going to go a dollar trifecta box, three, four, five. Yeah, this really is a tough one to handicap. I'm going with number four, Big Bad John. He is back to his winning ways, and I love David Miller with this horse today. So I'm looking for them to fire one off. Oh, and you didn't go with Roll with Joe? What's up with that? Uh, it was a toss of the coin. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You're forgiven. Back to you guys. See that? That could be a broadcasting first. There's Big Bad John, Steve. <laughs> um, your favorite? Uh, I got to tell you that I'm going to go with um, Roll with Joe, and I'm kind of shocked. We talked before the race. I'll say Santa was the chalk at 6-5, to five, and Scott Zirin is a Canadian driver. Okay, there's Custer the Dragon, Montreal Teague. He's got a big shot from the three-hole as they come up behind the gate for this legendary race. James with right is our track announcer with the Brandywine. This time, the gate's rolling, and Alsace Hanover is the even money favorite. Roll with Joe, nine to five second choice. Big Bad John, four to one third choice. They are ready for a start. Off for the Battle of the Brandywine. Roll with Joe, powerful missed, and Custer the Dragon. These three all left for the lead. Custer the Dragon sticks a nose just in front, but Roll with Joe is going to push the pace. Powerful missed, takes back the track this battle from third, and Custer the Dragon was rough gated on the first turn. So Roll with Joe is able to take over. Roll with Joe, a length and a quarter in front. Powerful miss, tight in the pocket. Custer the Dragon was reined back into third after some uneasy moments there on the first turn. Alsace Hanover is just off the pace today. He's fourth at four and a half lengths from the lead, followed by Big Bad John, two back to Winkin Atcha, two more to Feel Like a Fool, and High Noon moves wide from last, the quarter 26 and four fifth seconds over this good going with Roll with Joe, a length and a half in front of Powerful Mist. Alsace Hanover heads outer flow, headed for the bridge turn. The Adios winner up within two and a half lengths of the lead, taking third narrowly from Custer the Dragon. Big Bad John tracks cover to race's midpoint. He's fifth and four and a half from the front. Wink and Atch has got six to make up just wide of Feel Like a Fool, and Feel Like a Fool made a break, overtaken from the back by High Noon. The half mile, 54 and four. Three eighths to go in the 35th battle of the Brandywine, and Roll with Joe continues to shoulder the load. A length and a half in front of Alsace Hanover, a joint second with the pocket setting powerful mist. Big Bad John was guided three wide. He's gained to within two and a half lengths of the lead. Custer the Dragon begins to labor four and a half from the front. Wink and Atch is saving ground with five and a half to come. Two farther back to high noon and roll with Joe hit three quarters in one. 21 and two. Coming to head stretch. Roll with Joe trying to take them all the way. He's a length and a half in front of an all out powerful mist. Alsace Hanover lunging desperately at roll with Joe in these final yards. Roll with Joe all out. Alsace Hanover one last lunge. Oh, photo finish in the battle. Roll with Joe and Alsace Hanover. Big Bad John was third. Then powerful mist winking at you. Custer the Dragon, High Noon, and Feel Like a Fool, last of all, 149-2. 149-2, not a record, uh, Steve, but boy, five was coming hard. Yep. And the one, I, do you think the one lived? I wasn't sure. I couldn't tell from the TV angle. Uh, let's, let's take a, a look. look. Yeah. yeah. 
Okay, here you go. Now, this right now, Ron Pierce is really working on Roll with Joe, trying to live to the wire. And here comes the five, his chief competition, Woo. Alsace Hanover. Here it comes. It's ahead, Bob. Who gets it? Ooh, I, I'm not sure. I think the one lived. The two chalks. And Ron Pierce, it was a money-earning machine. The guy wins all the big money races. Very, very tight. Let's see, they post it. Uh, the crowd just went up with a roar, Steve. The one, roll with Joe. The one held. You're having a look at the winner right there, and he's just added the Battle of the Brandywine to his Meadowlands pace victory, and let's look at it again. Watch the one horse okay. in the lead. Ron Pierce has the lead, and he's out there. As they're going around, this is the first time around. Yep. Okay, powerful mist in the two hole and in the outside coming up is Alsace Hanover. And you know what? He doesn't mind. They got to suck up a lot of air on the outside. He doesn't seem to mind. That's how he won the audios. He is one tough competitor. Okay, now in the stretch, roll with Joe. He's looking to hang on. He's looking for the wire. Here comes Alsace. He's going to collar him. Is oh, he going to go man. by? This is as close this as is you tight. get. It's as good as it gets. Look at that. The winner, number one, Roll with Joe, and Ron Pierce wins another big money race. They have posted it. Number one is the winner, Roll with Joe, Ron Pierce. As you say, sometimes you bet the driver in this game. Ron Pierce wins a lot of big purses. And Ron Pierce decided, of course, to go with the one. He had a choice between the one and the five. And when I asked him before, you know, where are you going? He said, I'm going with the one. Why is that? Well, he went with him. He said, this horse is a horse, and the five, Alsace Hanover, is a gilding. So we're looking ahead to breeding and a little more of a future, future shares, so to speak. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are we ready to go down to Heather? What an exciting finish. As uh, Roll with Joe literally holds off the five horse, Alsace Hanover, to win the Battle of the Brandywine. When we come back, we'll talk with the winners from the winner's circle when we come back from a Super Stake Sunday in Chester. Roll with Joe, Ron Pierce driving them all the way to the winner circle, but certainly it was not an easy finish. Take a look at the photo finish here, Steve. Ooh, that's what you call close. <laughs> Can you see the wire? It's not much. It's this much from being a dead heat. It is that close. Well, that is literally what, uh, three inches? Four inches. Oh in no, I don't even think it's that much. Not even that much. Not even in, that much. In real, uh, in real space. In fact, the five, who may be a bigger horse, looks like he's ahead of him. But it, it, all that counts is the nose. Yeah, that's why they take those photos. Roll with Joe, winning the battle of the Brandywine and taking home two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in his own purse and paying not a bad six twenty to win two twenty and two twenty ahead of Alsace Hanover of the Great Farm at two forty and two forty. In fact, Rock and Roll Hanover winning here a year ago and setting the track record at one forty eight and four. And then Big Bad John. And, uh, boy, that was something. And you know what happened to Rock and Roll Heaven last year? He went on to, wow. Uh, rock and Roll Heaven, pardon me, yeah. Yeah. And rock and Roll Heaven. He had a great... great Didn't go year. to Rock and Roll Heaven, but... <laughs> <laughs> Might as well have. He's, he's getting a lot of broodmares. <laughs> <laughs> what a finish here in the Brandywine, and what a sensational day of racing. The, the three uh, prime stakes races that we show you, the Colonial, the Battle of the Brandywine, and, of course, see you with Peelers continuing her remarkable streak. But first, let's take a look back at the Battle of the Brandywine, uh, won once again by Roll with Joe. He's a length and a half in front of an all-out powerful mist. Alsace Hanover lunging desperately at Roll with Joe in these final yards. Roll with Joe all out. Alsace Hanover, one last lunge. Oh, photo finish in the battle. Roll with Joe and Alsace Hanover. Big Bad John was third. That and there's that photo finish. Heather, that was an unbelievable finish. I couldn't tell by my naked eye, but congratulations to you with the winners. Roll with Joe. Yes, I'm here with trainer Ed Hart. This horse, Meadowlands Pace winner, now a Battle of the Brandywine winner. And also today, you know, he surpassed a million dollars for this year. Yeah, he's, he's had a great year, no doubt. Now, how conf confident were you coming into this race? Because he's been super. Yeah, I was pretty confident. He, he had a week off. Uh, he, you know, he needed it after his last start. Um, and he was, he was very sound. He's seemed very sharp all week. And really, no, no issues with him. He's been very good. Ron Pierce had to go catch a plane, so we don't, we didn't get a chance to interview him today. However, he picked your horse over Alsace Hanover. That really says a lot. Yeah, Alsace Hanover was super in the adios, and uh, yeah, I was, uh, I was happy he did. Ronnie really gets along with his horse, very good, and I'm, I'm glad he drove him. 
Congratulations. Thank you very much. Tom Grossman, he's a part owner of Roll with Joe. All right, the jug is around the corner. You're ready for it, right? We have a giant Winnebago rented, and we're going to the jug via land. And we're, we, we're harness racing junkies, the whole group that own this. We always said if we had a horse, we'd be, we'd be going the right way to the jug. It's a week off for me. My boss is listening. Tough luck. We're going to the jug. How I stop before that, though, obviously. But, uh. <laughs> well, how good is this horse? Is there more left in the tank? Yeah, I think, you know, as you know, we, we, we're, uh, we raced Better's Delight at the Jug, and um, he's, a, he's, a, he's not physically similar to that horse, but he has guts and heart and, and balls to race just like, like, like Better's Delight. I think he's getting better. We raced him very lightly early on, and he can take the abuse, and he, li he likes to be roughed up, and uh, I think the best is yet to come, and I think he's going to love a small track. Did you think you had it won, or were you, like, biting your nails? I was biting my nails. I can't lie to you. It, I thought we got nailed, to be honest. I mean, we cut it out and we had the harder trip, but I thought we were nailed. Great race. Thanks so much. Oh, thank you. Guys, back to you. Thank you, Heather. I, I thought he got nailed, too. I mean, the, the naked eye, I thought he got nipped at the wire. No well, doubt as it was. My eye had clothes on, and to me, I saw the one. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? It's funny. Is the, it's is a the, recurring theme in the show. I guess. You know, the owner, he yeah. just said, I'm going to tell my boss I'm going to Little Brown Jug. He yeah. just won a hey, He's going to the bucks. jug right now anyway. I'm going <laughs> to tell you something. And the other continuing story here in our three featured races that we showed you on another Super Sunday's Stake Races here from uh, Harris in Chester. See you at Peelers continues the sensational story of the year. The Philly, the three-year-old Philly, now 22. Two for 22 in a remarkable career. If you missed it earlier, here's the finish of that great run in the Valley Forge. And Steve? See you at Peelers is now too clear. Crispy Apple has taken second back from a fading eye. Dilla dropped the ball. Circles wide on the turn with four lengths to make up. Three quarters in one, 22 and two. And See you at Peelers is three in front on head stretch. See you at Peelers holding clear from Crispy Apple. Idyllic is third, then dropped the ball. See you at Peelers. She's the real deal today. 22 in a row! In the bike behind her. How about it's that? Steve, as I said, when I'm watching, you can tell with these great animals sometimes, like the great human, I was reminded of Usain Bolt, you know, the Jamaican who yep. virtually turned around and ran backwards across the finish line. He was so relaxed. Yep. That was the look of see you at Peelers at the end of that one mile run. Okay. And, you know, the other thing is, now what's going to happen with her after she's now 22 for 22 is if she elects to go to the jug, which would be terrific for the sport because the sport of harness racing needs things like that. The Philly and, going, and against the Philly the, going against uh, the Colts. Yeah. And if she would do that, as you have a look at there, okay, in the, 20, in the last 20 years, only these horses have had more consecutive victories than her. If she, It's really amazing. See you at Peelers. What a champion. And see you right here on Comcast Sportsnet next Saturday for PA Harness Week with Steve and Heather and Sharla and Suzer. My name is Lou Tilly. We thank you so much for joining us on the Sunday and enjoy the rest of your weekend.